right. Hey there. Welcome again to Whoa, That's Good. It's Wednesday and it's going to be a great day. I am so excited about our guest today. I cannot wait to introduce you to her. You um, are going to know her name once I tell you a little bit about who she is and what she does, but she's a speaker, she's a writer, um, and she's an entrepreneur. She um, is Ann Byler, and here's how you're going to know her. Annie Ann's. If you have ever smelled an Annie Ann's pretzel or tasted an Annie Ann's pretzel, you will never forget it. And um, so she's already blessed my life in a lot of ways that I cannot wait to tell you about. But um, first of all, she blessed my life with these pretzels because they're really delicious. So thank you for being here. Yeah. Thank you, Corey. It's uh, an honor to be on, on your podcast. Thank you so much. Well, um, yeah, every time I'm in an airport and I just smell the pretzels, I have to like make a beeline. My favorite is the almond. So I'm sure everyone has their favorite, but that's my favorite. I love it. It's so good. So thank you for creating that. And um, well, I'm just excited to get in to hear more of your story today. So um, I met Anne not too long ago. We happened to be speaking at the same event. We were speaking at an event called Life Surge that Anne is a part of and speaks at and um, just does an incredible job. And I got to be a part of it a few times. And we had a dinner and sat down and just had a conversation. And it was one of those conversations that you know is like just really life-giving and life-changing as well. And um, I left that conversation. And that night, I could not stop thinking about some of your words and I actually typed up a little text to our family and just to our little swag fam, family text and just said, hey, here's some things I learned about God tonight um, through our conversation with you. And so after that, I was like, she has to come on the podcast. So thanks for saying yes to this. Yes, ma'am. My pleasure. All right. We are going to start with the way we always start, the Word That's Good podcast. And that's with asking the best piece of advice you've ever been given. <laughs> Well, Corey, you know that's a that's a loaded question. <laughs> um, as I look back over my uh, many decades of life and life's experiences, um, when it comes to business, um, I, I knew nothing about uh, business, and I grew up in an Amish farm and had no experience in any sort of business except with mom and daddy uh, when we did farmer's markets as a kid. So that was uh, kind of my extent of uh, knowing anything about, you know, customer service and how to grow business. And it was, we just had one <laughs> little farmer's market. But um, so when we started Auntie Anne's, uh, again, I had, I, I didn't know anything about business. There were three things we did not have when we started the company. We had no uh, capital. I had no formal education and we had uh, absolutely no business plan. So that's, that's really kind of a disaster, you know, a start for something disastrous. You, you really need those three things is what I found out much later. But I grew up in this on a farm that just really a mom and daddy taught me how to work hard and how to love people and have faith. And that was the three things that I did have. And so along the way, the early days of Auntie Anne's, you know, it's like God provided so many people that just came alongside me and encouraged me um, in, in many different ways. But the greatest piece of advice um, early on uh, came from my pastor who very much supported us in our church at that time. And we always appreciated him coming by. We were local and went to a church a few minutes from our house. And so everything was in our small community. And he would come by maybe every other week or so and just to check on us and see how we're doing. And I'm, I'm flying by the seat of my pants. You know, we started <laughs> with one store and, and then we ended up with, uh, two the first year and 12 the following, 12 more the following year, 35 the next year. And it was about at that time he came by the, um, office one day and he said so how are you doing today and you know what we always say a standard answer uh, for me I should say was always oh I'm doing great how are you it's uh, the response and when he asked me that question I just responded like I'm doing okay but Corey I, I was maxed out and he looked at me he came right up close to me and looked me square in the eyeballs and he said no I really want to know how is Ann Byler doing today well I just in a puddle of tears, I, I couldn't even speak. I was so like, I said, I, I can't do one more store. At that time, we had about 40, 50 stores. Wow. And he said, if you stood before God today, would you be a 20-fold, 60-fold, or a 100-fold Christian? Could you look at God and say, I've given it my best? Wow. 
wow. Just thinking about that moment is an emotional thing for me because that was my challenge that day. Mm. And he said to me, and I just said, Pastor, I, I really want to give it my best, but I cannot physically build one more story. I, I can't do it. And then he said, have you thought about using your gift? Now, I'm 52, 53 years old at that time. And um, I, I said, um, my gift? <laughs> and I said, no, I have no idea what my gift is. And he said, you don't know what your gift is? I, no. He said, I know what it is. And I said, really, I'm, I'm all ears. Please tell me. And uh, so he really just, you know, told me that I'm an encourager and you love to interact with people and uh, you, you, you can actually, you know, convince people, you're a negotiator. And I'm like, wow, okay, I, I didn't know that about me, but I love talking to people. He said, your gift is to encourage people. And he said, I want to encourage you today to take your gift into every aspect of your company and then do, do that well and then delegate all, most of the to-dos to your team. Just get other people to do, in other words, delegate. Mm -hmm. So my greatest advice was that he encouraged me to discover my gift mm -hmm. and then to use my gift in the world of business. Like, wow, God is so good, right? I mean, he's given yeah. us what we need yeah. to do the tasks that he's called us to. But that changed everything for me. Um, and I began to be able to start to delegate and ask the Lord, you know, just please show me how to use my gift and where to use it. And mm. it became much easier. Um, my, my whole business life became easier because I was able to just interject and use my gift all the time. Wow. That's so good. I feel like there's like so much to unpack there. One, that yeah. you were at, like at 52, you felt like you still, you had never really like identified your gift. And I feel like there's so many young people, a lot of young people that listen to this podcast and they're like spinning their wheels, like, God, what is it? What's the thing? What's the thing for me? And it might take time for you to really kind of understand and see your gift, but there is something special and unique that God put in you and he put in each of us to kind of give to the world. It's so true. And I, I made a mistake. I was 42. I'm sorry about 42. that. I was not 50. I was 42. Hey, still. <laughs> yeah. But still, I, I mean, you know, uh, that, that's, that's kind of late in the game to find out what your gift is. You know, for me, I, I never even thought about, I mean, I always wanted to do the will of God. I always yes. wanted to, you know, please God. I grew up in that, that church environment. My mom and dad taught me well. And, but I never really thought about that mm -hmm. God gave me a gift. Yeah. The gift that he gave me is to give to the world. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's kind of like God gave Jesus to the world to give us life. I believe that Jesus gives us to the world to give them life mm -hmm. and to find him. And I think he does that through our gifts and talents. And it, mm -hmm. it, it makes life meaningful and purposeful. Yeah. And it gives you, um, it gives you a guide. Like yes. I suddenly found myself looking at, okay, how can I use my gift in my franchising department? How can I use it when I go visit my stores? How can I use it when I'm um, hiring people in the company? How can I use it when I am interviewing franchisees to join the company? I used it everywhere I went. And, and, and as you discover your gift, then it grows. Like mm -hmm. you, you grow it, you mature with yeah. your gift and it just becomes um, very impactful. That's good. There was something else I was thinking about as you were talking about that is, you know, sometimes I think as women, we try to do all of, do it all. And we're, <laughs> we put that on our plate. It's like, we have to be good at this, 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 and this, and this, and, and all of it. And also be a good cook for our family or whatever. <laughs> well, I realized <laughs> cooking was not my gift. And so I gave that up long ago, but there is like, we do have to be able to like give things up and say like, I, I don't have to be good at everything and I don't have to do everything, but like, what is the thing that God has called me to? And what is he put in me that makes, that is unique to me that I can give and then allow other people to do, do the other things and, and pass exactly. off other things and don't hold the burden of, of, of doing it all. I think that's something that, um, I hear in what you're saying. Yes. And I think that as, as we discover our gift, we, we can, I should say I experienced then I was able to release yeah. things mm -hmm. that I wasn't very good at. You know, I'm sure my employees at that time with 50, 40, 50 stores, I'm sure I must have annoyed them, you know, feeling mm -hmm. like I have to do everything. Like yes. at that time we may have had 
I don't know, maybe 25 employees at corporate office or something. I don't remember exactly, but you know, I'm still feel like, you know, I can do this. Oh, I can do this better than anybody else. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. Um, so when you discover your gift, it's like, it was easy for me to release the things that I wasn't good at. I'd, for example, numbers. Don't please, please don't put me in an office behind a computer and get me to do spreadsheets. Uh, spreadsheets. <laughs> I, I, that's just you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So I was able to release yeah. the things that I didn't enjoy doing to people that were actually experts, and they really were good. They were very good at what they did. Mm-hmm. So it builds your company, you know, in a way, in a healthy way, instead of you mm-hmm. trying to hold on to everything. And yes. you know, I've always said though, if you want to grow your company. Um, there is no other way except to delegate. So, and when you delegate, it's, it's really a trust factor. You have to trust the people that you give the task to Mm -hmm. train them, teach them, show them for a period of time, but then let them do the job. So it freed me up uh, as a, as an owner of a company to, to do what I love to do. So y'all know I love being a grandmother, and one of the most fun parts of it right now is getting to see Honey become a big sister. She is so sweet to little Haven. Haven is basically like her little baby doll, and it's so fun to see them kind of like learn how to play together, even though obviously Haven doesn't really know how to play, but Honey thinks she's playing with her. It's so fun and exciting to watch our grandkids grow and just learn new things. I can't wait to see them grow into little people someday. That's one of the reasons I love KiwiCo. KiwiCo is a really neat subscription for kids that encourages brain building play. Every crate is packed with activities that help babies and older kids learn by playing and exploring. Since Sadie has a newborn and a two-year-old in the family, she got the Panda Crate, which is designed to support brain development in newborns and toddlers. Each Panda Crate has up to six products to help the kids learn and practice up to 10 new skills. I also love that Panda Crate is made with babies and parents in mind, so all the products are non-toxic and high quality. It's fun with all these products in the Panda Crate. Honey's able to play with Haven. I mean, she thinks she's playing with her at least. And she can read her the books, roll the balls to her, shake the rattle, you know, teach her things. As Haven's developing and growing, Honey's developing and growing too and learning how to play with her little sister. All we have to do is enjoy watching Haven as she grows and just learns and just becomes a little person. It's so sweet. I love how KiwiCo boxes combine learning with art and play so kids don't even know they're learning new things. We don't know what Haven's going to be into yet, but Panda Crate is definitely going to help her develop and grow. There's so many cool toys in the crate. Some are soft, plush toys. Other make sounds. There's all kinds of really neat things to help babies learn. And I love that as Honey and Haven grow, KiwiCo can grow with them as their skills and interests change. This month, the Panda Crate came with a little soft book that Honey can just read to Haven and also a wooden card that she can roll around and let her see her play. I think it's so fun to get to see Honey, just learn how to share and how to play with Haven. Haven loves the rattles and the little balls and everything that came in this crate. KiwiCo offers crates that are appropriate for any age. So I know that as my grands grow, KiwiCo will be there to help them learn and develop in a fun way. Foster brain building play with KiwiCo right now. Get 50% off your first month plus free shipping at KiwiCo.com. Promo code Sadie Rob. 50% off your first month with free shipping at kiwico.com. Promo code Sadie Rob. Kiwico.com. Promo code Sadie Rob. So one more question about Annie Ann's, and then I want to move on to hear more about your story since we're, because I love this. We're both, um, you know, women who work in business. I love all these questions about Annie Ann's, but whenever you did, when you sold Annie Ann's, whenever you decided you were going to move to a new phase of your life, what, um, how many stores did you have and um, how did that happen? How did that decision happen? Mm. At that time we had about 900 stores and it, in 18 years, uh, we, we owned the company and, um, it, it was, it, you know, it was a pretty well oiled machine by that time. But, um, I think that I was like, I was wore out. Like mm-hmm. I, I hate to say that, but I was, I should say I was maxed out. Yes. And I knew Corey that in order for the company to go to the next level, which I knew some things that were coming down the pike that we had to do as a company. I was so people oriented. I I wanted to, 
I loved being with people and I love to watch people develop in the company. And I love franchisees coming in from doing it like they didn't have anything and they come into Aunt Anne's and they, they do very well. I mean, that part of it was just gave me such joy. Uh, but I also knew, I think as a business owner, it's really important to know when it's time um, to, to leave your company or to, when, you have to know mm-hmm. when it's the right time. And Jonas and I both felt like there was something else that God wanted for us. And he just, um, shared some things with us. God just showed us some things and we prayed and really looked at the thought or thought about the, the idea of selling the company for three years. And so by the time we sold it, we had it in our, in our minds. We, we knew what God wanted and we knew God had something else for us. And we felt like God gave us Auntie Anne's for another purpose in life. And so it was after Auntie Anne's, that is when I started to write and to read, um, to write and to speak more. But uh, what really um, encouraged me at the very beginning of that was uh, I was on the board of an of a organization at that time, and I saw an older gentleman at that time. He was 75. So um, now I say older because I'm, mm-hmm. I'm uh, sort of in that category right now. But I watched him. He was a founder of a, of a counseling uh, which he was very good and had many employees. And I, w- I was on the board watching him try to let go mm-hmm. and watching the employees trying to let go of the founder. And I got in my car after that meeting. I told my husband, I can tell you right now, I am not going to be Auntie Anne when I'm 75. And he said, well, how old are you going to be? And I'm like, I don't know, but I can't be 75 and walk around the office and really think I'm important. And like, I got a lot to give and, and I don't know. I, I just feel like I can't do that. And so we came up with a number and he said, well, if you want to do that, you need to start planning it right now. At that time I was 55 and by the time I was 58, we had sold the companies. So, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, and it really was the right decision for us. At the time, it was tough. It was difficult. It was my baby. You know, it was, yeah. oh, wow, many tears and, you know, lots of struggle as we came up to the final decision. Um, but we just knew it was, it was good timing. And then the new owner took over and really did take the company to another level, which, um, and today, Auntie Anne's is still doing very well. And I'm just, um, I'm grateful. That's amazing. That's awesome. Well, Annie Ann's was actually birthed out of a difficult time in your life, as yes. far as I remember from your story. So can yes. you kind of take us back? You mentioned you were grew up in an Amish community. So kind of yes. take us back to, to a little bit of your life story um, that brought you to where you are today. Mm. Yeah, grow, growing up in the Amish culture, I, I really believed as a kid um, that you know, God is good and, or no, I I should say life is good and God is harsh. And I always felt like keeping the 10 commandments and pleasing God and pleasing, you know, my parents was really important. And that was my goal, uh, to please God and to, um, uh, honor my parents and hopefully one day get married and, you know, have a great family. And, uh, you know, so I went into life kind of in a na- naive, really believing that, that life is good because I hadn't, there was nothing that happened in my childhood. There was eight of us kids and on the farm and, uh, you know, we had no major tragedies. So life is good. Right. And, um, uh, Jonas and I got married. We were very young, which is what Amish people still to this day, they do. He was Amish as well. Got married at the age of 19 and he was 21 and happily married. I was like, I was ready to be married. I wanted to be wife and have, have babies. And, you know, life was good. And at that time, we had a really a neat experience with, with Jesus. But we both were saved at the age of maybe 12, 13. I was 12. And, and so we had a relationship with God. But, but as when we got married, we just, we really hungered for more. Just we were hungry for the things of God, not religion, but just have a relationship with Christ. And, and so we pursued that and we got involved in a very exciting church. We had two little girls and uh, life was good. And, you know, I, I thought that I had reached my peak um, spiritually, I guess. I don't know, but we were ready to win the world for Christ. And in the middle of that really high, uh, spiritual high, um, our 19-month-old daughter uh, was killed instantly on our little uh, farmette. We lived right next to my mom and dad. And uh, my mm-hmm. sweet Angie, she would always walk up to mom's house. And it was in the country, so it was safe and and my sister worked for my dad, and she did a um, loaded and unloaded sand with a bobcat. And that morning, particular morning, she did not see Angie, and mm. and she uh, accidentally ran over her, and Angie was killed uh, instantly. Yeah. Um, so that changed <laughs> yeah, everything. 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 Mm, and so, you know, the grief uh, was 
we're not really taught how to grieve or, or mm. how to talk about death or grief. Or I, at least back in the day, there was, I didn't read a book. I, I didn't go to grief counseling. I didn't go for any counseling. And so what do you do? You know, family supported us, surrounded us for, you know, a few weeks and all that, you know, but I, I just really felt like I had to be strong for my sister, Fi. And for my four-year-old, uh, Luana, who happened to see the accident as well. And so I'm trying to be strong and, um, and feeling like I'm falling apart on the inside more and more and more. And I just wasn't able to, Jonas and I drifted emotionally. We didn't hardly talk anymore. And so I decided to go to see my pastor, who I thought was a good man. And I just poured out my heart. And before I left his office, that that fateful Monday morning, um, he took advantage of me and, um, uh, walking out from his office, I'm like, uh, I don't know anything about abuse. Mm. I don't, I don't even know anything about adultery. I mean, I was pretty sheltered and I, I I was shocked, but I thought, well, I I know one thing I can't tell anyone what he just did. Mm. So Corey, what, what, what's really important about my story is that I don't place blame you know, on God for, you know, Angie's death. And I don't place blame on, on the pastor. He chose to do this to me, Mm -hmm. but, and for many years I was angry and I blamed and I was mad at God and mad at Jonas and just, I was so confused Yeah, because I thought that life is good. You know, I really just still believe that life should be good Mm -hmm. and God is harsh. So what did I do that created all of this, you know, but what I know that day Mm -hmm. when I walked out of the office, I made a choice and what you choose today is the life that you will live tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And so choices are very important. God created us Mm -hmm. uh, to make choices good or bad. It's really up to us. Right. So what was done to me was a very bad choice by, by my pastor. But then I walked out the door and I made a choice that I would never tell anyone. And that one secret Corey took me into the dark world of abuse for seven years. Wow. Nobody knew. I never told anyone. I stayed there because when you go into that world of secrets, that's the world where Satan lives. It's where he lives. <laughs> it, it's, he, he'll, he'll lure you in there. And then once you're there, he gives you the tools. Mm-hmm. And you can stay there for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And you can survive. And that's what I did. I just survived. I mean, I survived. I was down to skin and bones. I weighed 90 pounds. My, wow. I thought I was having heart attacks every once in a while. I went to the doctor and it, it was just a very dark time. That's so hard. But, yeah. It, yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, I remember um, when we had this conversation, you first told me your story and I'm just so grateful for you sharing your story because I know that so many people have experienced Yes. Some of the things that you go through, if not all the things you go through, but some of the things you've gone through. And I'm just so grateful because that is that bringing that light into the darkness, mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. actually is what overcomes the evil one. And the Bible tells us that. Another thing that I remember saying to you that day, because as you were telling me the story, I'm like, I'm looking at you and you're speaking and you've written books and you, um, you know, and I, your husband was there with us and at, at this meal. And I said, but were you ever angry at God? And you went mm-hmm. on to tell me some more of some more of your story, and it, it's just so powerful. So you go ahead. I, I I don't want to stop you. I just I just wanted to just bring that up. Just that, um, yeah, the inspiration that you are in telling your story, I think, is just so important. And I know so many people are going to really um, relate to this and and be blessed by you telling it. So thank you. Hey friends, Sadie Rob here. One thing that the Huff fam loves to do is staying active. Not just me and Christian, but Honey is very active too, and so is Cabo. Our whole family is pretty active. I assume Haven will be too. Staying active together is a top priority in our house, and that's why we love AG1 by Athletic Greens. It's a daily part of the Huff fam's life. Keeps us staying active. Christian is always on the lookout for great stuff to help him meet his health and fitness goals, so he gave AG1 a try, and he immediately began to notice the boost in his energy levels throughout the day. Just one scoop in a glass of water gives you 75 vitamins and minerals and supports your immune system. AG1 also improves your gut health, which means overall health is included in that. AG1 um, pretty much has it all for you and it's designed with ease in mind so that you can live a healthier lifestyle and not really have to do a lot. One thing Christian and I both love about too is that it's super easy to travel with because they have 
AG1 travel packs. You can just toss it in your bag, your carry-on bag, and it helps you stick to healthy habits even when you're on the road, which can be hard to do sometimes. So many people we know uh, have heard us talk about it and gotten on board as well. We have several friends and family members who take AG1 now because uh, we've been hyping it up. Another thing I'm loving is their vitamin D3 plus K2 drops. They're seriously so easy and it's so good for your heart, your teeth, your bones, even your skin. I just put a few drops in my food or my drink and it's so easy. I mean, you can keep it at your desk. You can keep it anywhere that's near you and just put a few drops. Don't have to worry about pills or powder or complicated routine. And vitamin D will definitely have you feeling uh, so great. And it's also great because this bottle is not going to run out anytime soon. You're definitely getting uh, your dollars worth on it. It is six. 100 servings in each bottle from Athletic Greens, so you're going to have it for a long time. So if you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Just go to athleticgreens.com slash woe. That's athleticgreens.com slash woe to check it out today. Well, so going into the dark world, you know, when you when you step into that world, it's uh, it's confusing. And we go there mainly, I I believe, from my experience, because of our pain. We don't understand. But once you're there, it's really hard to know how to come back. You know what I mean? And I remember uh, during that time, those seven years were long and hard. And during that time, we also had another baby. And um, so we have two daughters. Uh, Today, they're 52 and 47 and beautiful girls. And my greatest uh, regret in life has been uh, to be uh, that I knew that I was not there for them emotionally. And, you know, when we find ourselves being used and abused and into this crazy world or whatever it may be that you find yourself in and you, it's really hard to function as a wife and as a mother. And so my encouragement would be just to like work through that as quickly as you can so that the regrets aren't as deep and long. My regrets were, you know, Angie was killed in 1975. No, I'm sorry, 1976. I was abused in January of 77. And it wasn't until 2003 that I was finally able. It's it's really, it's it's crazy because, Corey, that's not the way Jesus means for us to live. Mm. (laughs) He Mm -hmm. wants us to be free. But it wasn't, it was all those years that I struggled with regret, uh, with uh, depression, with anger, with so much guilt and shame. I couldn't hardly get out from under it. It it just covered me. But in the year 2003, I had an encounter with Christ. I love the Lord and I served him. And Jonas and I, our marriage was restored in, in 1982. So it was, so as many years, I still regretted and felt guilt and shame for many, many years. And even though Jonas and I were doing okay, you know, we re- our marriage was restored. We were able to talk, and God blessed us. And Auntie Anne started after that. I mean, it was our whole world just changed. But inside of me, I still carried the guilt and the shame because why? Because I could not. Still, I could not believe that I did this to my family, to my sweet daughters, and my husband. And in 2003, I had an encounter with Christ. I was just feeling the burden of all of the years of the guilt and the shame. And I was just talking to the Lord about, I cannot believe that I'm still feeling this way. I was going down into this really, really dark hole in my, because I knew what depression was. I'd experienced so much of it. And in my talk with the Lord that morning, I was going down into this dark hole again. I said, Lord, I can't go back to that dark hole. You've brought me up out of the slimy pit. You've lifted me up. I'm not going back there, but I don't know how to move forward right now. And he spoke to me, Corey, and he said, Ann, I have done everything there is to do for you. There is nothing left for me to do. Will you forgive yourself? Mm-hmm. And wow. In that moment, I had never thought about, you know, I knew God forgave me. I knew Jonas forgave me. I knew my kids were, you know, on the, on the path to recovery and forgiving their mom and my friends. And, but how do you forgive yourself when, when you have impacted so many lives in a very negative way? And, and the reason I, I tear up about this today, Corey, is not because I'm guilty and ashamed anymore. I'm just, amazed at what God really wants to do for us. Mm -hmm. But we carry this ball and chain around feeling like because I did wrong, I have to punish myself. Mm. And that's what I did. But that morning, as I said, when he asked me to forgive myself, I said, wow, yes, 
I mean, I just fell to the floor, it wept, wept. Just, I couldn't stop crying. It was wow. like the waves of the sea just kept rolling over me. The waves of grace, like they just kept, just come constantly just overcoming my whole being. Wow. And when I was done with that, I, I knew, Corey, that I was clean. And from that day to this day, there is no shame and there is no guilt. Why? Because not only did Jesus forgive us mm -hmm. of our sins, which is amazing, <laughs> because we're forgiven, we can go to heaven, but he carried my shame. Mm -hmm. So if I didn't accept his forgiveness and, my, and forgive myself, that means I'm saying he didn't do enough for me. Yeah. I still have to carry my guilt and shame because I feel like I have to punish myself. But no, yeah. that's really just a trick of the enemy mm -hmm. because he knows he can keep you down. Uh, when you feel guilty and shame-filled. But Jesus came to set us free. And the way the way we stay free in Christ is to bring all of our deeds into the light. When you feel like you have done wrong, or when you feel like someone's wronged you, or it's, we all experience it. And what most yeah. of us do is is we just we just hold it inside, or we get so angry, or we go get drunk, or we go have sex, or we go do drugs, or we do all the, all these things. When Jesus said, just bring all of your deeds into the light, just give them to me, tell somebody. And that's yeah. what set me free is when I was able to tell Jonas seven years later, I finally told him what my life was about. And that's when I felt the, the, the beginning of a life of freedom. And Jonas then in turn never made me feel guilty. He loved me, wow. forgave me. And we set out on this very long journey of restore, restoring and of healing, inner healing. And then even as, as our marriage, we just began to, it was a long, long journey. But God is faithful when we're open and honest and transparent. And we use the James 5, 16 model. It simply says, confess your faults, your sins, your struggles. What is it that you hate about yourself? Tell somebody. You know, we internalize everything, but God wants us to be open and honest with each other so that we can um, be free and so that we can understand that Corey, when you and I talked, you know, you told me some things about your story and your life. And I'm like, wow, it just makes me connect with you mm -hmm. and appreciate you. Mm -hmm. If I don't know you, then it's kind of like, I'm judging you. Like, I don't know. I don't know why is she acting that way or what she, you know, but once we fellowship in our pain and our suffering and we're honest, we get to know each other. And then it's more like, wow, Corey, I can't, how did you do that? And you, you just appreciate and respect people in a much deeper way rather than just keeping all to ourselves. And inwardly, we die a little bit more every day. Yeah. And I think it's whenever you do, you do have those honest, real conversations with people that you realize that like, we're all going through things. We've all had, we've all felt those same feelings. We've all felt the same feelings of shame and, and of not being yeah. enough and of hurting people yes. and all the yes. things. And then whenever you just speak those out loud, someone else can just say, oh yeah, me too. I was there too. I feel that too. And I think one mm -hmm. of the things I keep hearing you saying is just that honesty and that First of all, that honesty with God that he can take, he can take your pain. He's big enough. He's yes, big he enough can. to hear your questions, your anger, your fears, your, all the things. And he's big enough to hear them and hold them and, um, and, and free you of them. Yes, and absolutely. So many of us, I think, and I, there's been times in my life when you're, you know, you're scared to just be honest before God. Like he doesn't know everything already, but you feel like you have to like come with these like perfect prayers or perfect, like. The, yeah, right. the thoughts need to all be good because like, oh, I'm, I'm a Christian. I, I'm a believer. So I have to come with all the right things. But he really just wants all of you and the real That's you right. and all of you and you to surrender to him. And it's in that just being honest with him that he, he can, he can heal and restore. I love, I love your conversations as you kind of talk and, and, um, I can hear your relationship with God because of that honesty, just saying like, God, why, why, why is it like this? And then he speaks back to you and says, hey, and on, he comes back honest to you to say like, hey, quit. I've done it all. Like I've already done it. Yeah. You have to, yeah. you just have to accept it. And then that yeah. honesty with Jonas, your husband. Um, yeah. How, how, how was it? How did you gather up the courage to just hmm. c come out of the beast? 
Oh my goodness, it is so hot in Louisiana, so I'm definitely needing all my summer shorts. And luckily, in my latest Stitch Fix box, I got the cutest pair of shorts. They're um, the perfect length for me, and I got a really cute tank that I have loved. So I love my Stitch Fix box. So no matter what your style looks like, Stitch Fix is the best way to discover new brands and looks that are perfect for you. They're like your personal style partner who sends you the cutest stuff, no matter what season it is. Stitch Fix stylists work with you to find looks you'll love. And I love that they send wear and nail styles and colors and patterns that work for whatever time of year I get my fix. All you have to do is answer a few questions about your usual style, where you like to shop, and how much you want to spend. That's what I did. And when my Stitch Fix box came in, I had some super cute things in it. The wonderful thing about Stitch Fix is you get to try it on in your own home. And the things that you don't love, you just send back, which... I always end up loving most of it and keeping most of it, of course. I'm pretty tall, so I love it that Stitch Fix offers a wide range of sizes and over a thousand brands so I can find something that looks great on me. Once I got my fix, I tried everything on in my own mirror at my own home, and I love how easy they make it to have great style. I got to keep the things I like and send back the rest. Shipping, returns, and exchanges are free, which is also super convenient. With no subscription required, I can order a refresh whenever I need one. Or I can set it and forget it with regular fixes. Stitch Fix wants you to be in control of your style. Try Stitch Fix today at stitchfix.com slash woe, and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash woe for 25% off today. Stitchfix.com slash W-H-O-A. You know, all those years, Corey, the seven years, I, I I prayed and I asked God to help me, deliver me, please help me, you know. And it was during those years that I got, that's why I got mad at God, because he didn't deliver me. He didn't answer my prayer. You know, I kept going deeper and deeper and deeper. I could not get away from this abuse. And uh, so um, God wants us to be responsible. Mm. He He wants us to make good choices, right? Mm-hmm. And so I'm praying and begging for God to to deliver me and help me. And he kept me. And all during those years, um, he never moved. He, he was with me, but I felt like he was so far away. Why? Because of my own guilt and shame. So Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are always right there, but we don't pay any attention. We, we think they're gone because we're in such deep pain and in this dark place. But but one morning as I'm, as I'm, you know, just struggling and, and trying to get through my pain and, and one more time, I'm just praying, God, please, you know, deliver me. And he just really, uh, encouraged me one morning, very, in a very tangible way, I get up off your knees, um, and go tell Jonas. Wow. I, I thought, I thought keeping the secret was, I, I felt like that was the spiritual thing to do, like keeping silent. Cause if I tell Jonas, then number one, he would divorce me. And number two, um, what's he going to think about me? I, I just, I, so if he doesn't know, then I'll, I'll get through this somehow. But that is such a trick of the enemy. And mm. so I get up that, uh, off my knees that morning and my palms are sweating and I'm, I'm arguing with God, Lord, I, I can't do this. I, I, I can't. I, I don't know how. I don't know what to say. I don't, and I don't know. The Holy Spirit inside of me just, convinced me, kept pushing me forward. And I get my little blue pickup truck and I drove to the body shop where he was repairing cars and walked into the office. And just with two little sentences, I just told him uh, what my life was about in two sentences. Wow! I didn't hold his hand. I didn't give him a hug, but I looked in his eyes when I said it. And Corey, I could, the look in his eyes, I had to turn around and leave. I didn't even let him respond because I, I, I knew, I knew it was over. Hmm. Uh, because it was such a shock for him. And I was at that time devastated because I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah, he, he's going to divorce me. And I go home and I uh, laid over my bed and I just wept, wept, wept. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, now I understand. This is not just my problem. This is my family's problem. And Jesus, in that moment, he spoke to me again. He said, and he who is forgiven much loves much. I've forgiven you Mm. and you will love much one day. Mm. And the the gift that God has given me, not just my marriage restored, an amazing husband that we're married almost 55 years. Wow. Praise God. Hard to believe, but it's miraculous. God wants to be involved in your life. Mm -hmm. He has life 
in store for you. The darkness and the struggles and the anger and the stuff that we, we try to do to hide all these things. You know, I will tell you though, if you're in a really bad marriage, I, I want to encourage you to, to, you know, make sure that whoever you talk to about anything, maybe you can't talk to your husband right away or, but you, you have to have someone that you absolutely feel safe with, someone that you can trust, not someone that will actually tell you what to do. You just need to unload. Yeah. to a very trusted friend. Mm-hmm. And that's the beginning of an of coming out of the dark world, going into the light. And then you begin to walk in that truth and in that light. And I'm telling you, God wants to do a whole lot more for you than what you can even imagine. The life that I'm living today, it's not about things. It's not about houses, lands, cars, stuff. I mean, honestly, Corey, it's yeah. not about that. But the joy and the peace you know, it gets bigger and bigger. Yeah. It's not like you have peace. Okay. Cause I'm going to say I'm Christian. I'm not at peace because I love Jesus. No, 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 no. This is alive. This is real. The peace that he gives us is way beyond. And the world that you find yourself in the truth and the light that you walk in is way beyond anything that you could ever imagined. And that's yes. where I live today. I, it's unbelievable. That's so beautiful. And then I get to meet people like you, Corey. Oh, it's so beautiful and such a blessing. I was thinking about, as you were saying that, about the, um, you know, it is also a lifelong process. I know as we talked, we talked about counseling and how important counseling has been in our life and later in our life when we're like, oh, if we'd have done that sooner, you know, but, but it is, it's, it's not just one step. Yes, there's time, there's so many times when God frees you of things and teaches you new things and still I'm learning new things day after day and trying to step it into what the life that God has for me. And sometimes that takes paths of a person speaking into your life or a counselor or going away for a week to a, to a place that you can really just actually take, spend time with God. And, um, but it looks, it looks different throughout your lifetime. So yeah, stick with it and keep, and keep going in it. You know, I want to encourage people who, if you're, if you're somewhere in this journey, you know, just keep going. I actually heard someone the other day was talking about, um, prayer and, and he was saying like, well, you can, you know, you can pray to God to build a table, but God, he doesn't really build the table. You know, you have to build the table. Like you can ask him for wisdom and guidance and, and the tools and, you know, the steps to take, but like you have to build the table. And I thought that was such a good example of how he works in our life. Cause sometimes, and I've been there like, God, do this for me. Like, take it all away. Like, this is, this is hard. It's too much. I don't really know what to do. So just do it. Just miraculously let someone come into my life. And sometimes he does work Mm -hmm. that way. And he, and he, I'm not saying that he doesn't, but I think, um, a lot of times he's like, here, I need you to, I need you to go pick up the wood and I need you to go find the hammer. And I need you to do Mm -hmm. these things to build the table. And, um, he gives you, he gives you the ability and the strength and the courage and, all those things to do that. Absolutely. So, so, you know, faith without works is dead. And then the Bible also says, work out your own, work out yeah. your own salvation in fear and trouble. You work it out. And I love a verse in Proverbs 6, 5. It says, set yourself free mm. like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter and like a bird from the snare of the fowler. So setting myself free, I'm just, my own experience has been my setting myself free was a will, a choice that I, I had the will and I made choices day after day after day when I was weary, when I didn't feel like going to the counselor again, when I didn't want to talk to Jonas about something again, again, and again, when, but you keep setting yourself free. You do the work. It's a struggle. I mean, if you picture a gazelle from the hand of the hunter and the bird from the scenario, I mean, it's a struggle Mm -hmm. to, you know, to set yourself free. We are free in Christ for heaven. We're free in him, but to live life fully here, we just need to be responsible, take responsibility. I had to take responsibility yeah. for the choice I made that day many, many years ago. I can talk about it today. And, you know, there's still some things in my life that I struggle with about that. But I know um, I know that God has set me free. And as I share my story and as I continue to be open and honest, even with you on your show right now, it's it, 
that keeps setting you free. So faith without works is dead. You cannot sit on your recliner or watch TV 24-7 and eat cookies all day long and expect God to just come down and magically, magically make everything better for you. That's not the biblical way. Yeah, there, there is, there is a plan that He has for us, and we have to be, uh, we have to be determined and clear about what God wants. We have to know His Word. We have to understand what His principles are. Yeah, and to walk in His ways. I mentioned earlier that um, Annie Ann's was kind of born out of this tragedy. How, how did That's that right. happen? Yeah, so out of our pain, as I always say, out of our pain, our purpose was born. And and during this dark time, and when I finally came out with my secret, Jonas was devastated. And he went to see a marriage counselor and talked to him about it. And then he encouraged me to go with him to see a counselor. So immediately, somehow, he had the... I'd never been to a counselor before. I was so mad that he wanted me to go to a counselor. I'm like, I don't want to talk about this. I mean, I told you and I'm done now, right? But we went to see a counselor. And, and, and even in that, Corey, God just worked in such a beautiful way because Jonas was, has always been an inventor. Uh, he always figures, he's a, has a, he figures everything out. Like he can fix a hairdryer, he can build a house and anything in between. So he just figures it out. Well, when this happened to us, he was like, he just asked the Lord, Lord, how? How could this happen to us? Why did this happen to me and my family? It was, it, it was just puzzled him. And he set out to try to understand human behavior. What, what makes us act these ways? So he ended up going to marriage. Uh, he ended up doing, taking marriage courses back in the day, counseling courses and, uh, um, correspondence course. And he became a layman's counselor through Emerge Ministries in Akron, Ohio, studied for about five years. And he was so passionate about this. And he told me one day, hon, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. And I'm not going to charge a penny for to anyone. I, I'm just going to do it. Well, so he started counseling as a free service to the Amish and Mennonite people is what we're, that's our culture and other people as well. But that was his heart. And they came day after day after day. And he started counseling three, four days a week and didn't really make any money. So that's why I went to work so that I could support him. He, he saved me. Jesus and Jonas saved me. You know, you need people to lift you up and encourage you and hold your hand and say, you can do this. Mm -hmm. And so I went to work to support him so he could uh, do marriage counseling. And he did marriage counseling for 25 years. And Auntie Anne's was started through that. And uh, we were able then to build a community center and um, through, throughout the years, thousands and thousands of people he counseled along with his staff of about 15 people and um wow it was a, a free service and it was just an incredible so out of our pain yes our purpose was born so what is your what are you feeling today what what is your greatest struggle you know it's hard to believe that right now in your struggle that god actually has a plan mm -hmm. but i'm telling you it's true he has a plan follow him just follow his plan. Get out of your darkness and begin to change your life. Walk in the light. I mean, there was small things that God asked me to do. Don't go anywhere by yourself, he said to me. Always take somebody along because I didn't trust me in, in the environment that I'd been in for seven years. I didn't trust myself. So I told Jonas, uh, you go with me everywhere I go. So I didn't go anywhere unless he went along. And the other thing was he told me to stop watching uh, TV um, stop watching um, days. It was days of our lives. A couple of shows. I, I just, you know, I live for them. And God was very clear. Those are two things that he asked me to do. So there, you know, when God wants to set you free, you, you do the work, you make that choice and you begin to walk towards freedom. What is it that's keeping you where you are? Yeah. And I knew when God spoke those things to me, I knew I had to do that. So yeah. we have to change our ways actually. and sometimes it takes it takes to sacrifice and you know you look at like the biblical model the old testament there was actual sacrifice and i think we think don't think about that anymore because you know that's the old law and it's different for now mm -hmm. but so mm -hmm. god calls us to sacrifice we really are called to lay down our whole lives for him and sometimes that's right. that takes actual steps of obedience that, yes. you know, we don't want to take because everybody else is doing it and this looks really comfortable and this, you know, is is filling some hole that I have inside yeah. of me. But actually God says, no, like you have, there's some sacrifice involved in coming to me. You have to count the cost and there's some things involved in coming to me. And um, those are hard to do. It's still, that's, that's still the call of Christ. Follow. He says, take up your cross. Mm -hmm. mm. 
and follow him. Yeah. You know, I, I know it's easier for us to say that easy for us to say that we're, you know, we're Christians, but it, it's more than that. It's, it's being a follower mm-hmm. of Christ. A good friend of mine, Alicia Cholet, um, has really, she talks a lot about, she's got a new book coming out um, called The Night is Normal, and where she just talks about, as Christians, we so want to think that like, oh, life should be good, like you talked about. Life should yeah. be good because we're a Christian, and like, we shouldn't experience all these hard and bad emotions and all the, we should be free from all the bad things that this earth offers. But no, like even look at Jesus's life. He experienced, you know, anger and frustration all mm-hmm. and all of the same, the the hard feelings that we mm-hmm. so try to avoid. And especially within the faith, like, oh, we're supposed to be full of joy and peace and patience and all these things. And that that's true. And the spirit does give us that, but we are in this world and we are going to experience the hard things as well. What do you feel like God has taught you? What's kind of the, the lesson you feel like oh. God has taught you in all of this? Oh, wow. I know there's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think what I've learned yeah, many things. But today where I'm at with, with the lessons I've learned in life is that, you know, um, life is hard. But what I know, what I've learned is that life is hard. God is good. Mm. I am not confused about that. So what I've learned is that when painful things happen, I just had a, a nephew of 50 years old, family of three in perfect health. I mean, he was a great guy, dropped over dead of a heart attack. Mm. Um, you know, my mind always goes, my thoughts always go to life is hard. God is good. Yeah. Don't confuse the two. So when bad things happen, I land on that piece of truth, that truth, that rock, you know, just Jesus said in this world, you will have not, Oh, you might some every now and again, some of you, no, he said in this life, you shall have tribulation. But I, I don't know where we get this idea that it should be good. So that is really one lesson that I have learned. And it, it's, it, it settles me. It gives me peace. So when my nephew passed away, I'm like, okay, God, life is hard. Mm-hmm. I mean, the family left behind. I mean, all of those things. But you are good. And Corey, if we can know that truth, mm-hmm. if we know that God is good, then we'll not be confused. Mm-hmm. We can ask why. Mm-hmm. And we can wonder and we can be sad and we can grieve and we can be angry. All of those things. Life is hard. Mm-hmm. God is good. Don't confuse the two. And what, the other thing I've learned is like in our pain, in my pain, is where I learned compassion. I, I, I can't even imagine what I, would, <laughs> what I would be like without these experiences in life that have kept me at the foot of the cross. Yeah always reaching out for his help. Mm. I need him. I need him. I'm never Mm. above the, I need you, Jesus. I'm always there. Again, when you've experienced darkness and great pain, and you've experienced the deliverance, the, 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 the transformation, which in my case took a long time, but the transformation that takes time, you, you, you just learn to, to, to trust in the process. You learn to trust in Jesus, and you learn to walk with him and talk to him. And he's always there for you. His presence really is all you need. Yeah. And if you can, in your darkest times, stop be quiet and listen. You will feel his presence. Yeah. There's nothing, nothing greater than that. Yeah. And I've learned that no matter how dark, how hard, how confused it might be, how confusing life could become, how the things that I wish I could have that I can't have, that sometimes if I stop, and know he's with me, and expect his presence, I can feel his presence, Mm. then that's all I need. The Lord is my shepherd, David said. I shall not want. That's a lifelong journey of learning for me. Mm. (laughs) I shall Mm -hmm. not want for Mm -hmm. anything except him. Mm. 
That's so good. Thank you, Anne. Your life is just, I cannot think of a more powerful example of the words um, that, how the way God uses our life and all of our pain to become purpose, the way he has just used your life and has um, just blessed you in your faithfulness to him and um, through all the pain and through all the struggle, just um, put you in a place and a position where you are helping and just um, spreading the love of Jesus to thousands and thousands and millions and millions. And I'm so thankful that for that, thankful for your life. And thank you for those words. Um, life is hard. God is good. I will never forget that. I think that is just such we do. We, we mess up that theology. And when we mess yes. that up, it can mess up everything in our life, honestly. But Absolutely. that reminder that, yeah, life is going to be hard. There is evil in this world. The evil one is in this world. And um, there is going to be there is going to be pain and hardship, but in all of that and through all of that, God is good and he is with us in all of it. Thank you so much. Please tell tell us the name of your books because I know people are going to want to find you and read more about your story and get more of your wisdom. What's your, what are the titles of your books? Yeah, the titles are, uh, the, the latest one I wrote was uh, Overcome and Lead. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one before that was The Secret Lies Within. And the other one, the very first one I wrote was The Twist of Faith. And uh, then I just, um, I'm just promoting a cookbook right now that we just uh, are starting to release. So look for my cookbook as well. Get on, just go to my website. And if you want to order it from, from us, we'll send you a signed copy. If not, you can find them on Amazon. Nice. How can they find you? What's your website? Uh, just Ann Byler, www.antiannbyler. Perfect. Thank you so much. It's been yes. such a blessing. I love you. And I love getting to have this time with you today. Thank you. Love you, Corey. It's a great, I just enjoyed my time with you as well. And I'll see you soon. Yes, yeah, see you soon.